Today we will discuss about external fixator and the components of an external fixator. First one is a shan screw. It has got a quadrangular top, shaft, threaded end and a tip. This threaded end engages into far cortex of bone and the quadrangular top engages firmly into the T handle. Diameter varies from 2 to 6 mm at an interval of 0.5 mm. For femur, tibia and humerus, 4.5 mm or 5 mm shan screw will be used. For radius and ulna, 3.5 mm and metacarpal and metatarsal bone, 2.5 mm shan screw is preferred. And shan screw is a component of AO external fixator frame. Next we will discuss about the clamp and rods of AO external fixator frame. The connecting rod has got a diameter of 11 mm and a length of 10 to 60 cm. And it has got clamps. These clamps are two types, swivel or closed type and fixed or open type. Here you can see the closed type of clamp. So external fixator is a device used for stabilization and immobilization of long bone open fractures. The major indications of an external fixator are in a severe open fracture, a closed to fracture with a severe soft tissue injury, open fracture involving bone loss or in compartment syndrome after fasciotomy or in limb lengthening procedures or in bone transport. External fixation could be a temporary fixation or could be a final fixation of fractures. In case of temporary fixation, after uh, placing the external fixator, we can give IV antibiotics and let the soft tissue to heal and wait for 2 to 4 weeks. Uh, after removing the pins and if pin sites are clean, we can convert the external fixation into a intramedullary nailing or a plating. Complications of external fixator are pin track infection, neurovascular damage, muscle or tendon injury, delayed union compartment syndrome, refracture and cosmetic problems. Advantages of external fixator are less damage to the blood supply of bone and minimal damage to soft tissue, useful for stabilization of open fractures and in fractures with the risk of infection and also useful in osteomyelitis. Next is antibiotic bond cement braided over an SS wire. It is used for osteomyelitis and also as a spacer in hip and knee joint infection. Preparation of bond cement is an exothermic reaction so the antibiotic must be a thermostable one and it should be water soluble and bactericidal with the minimum allergic properties. Elution of antibiotics from bond cement takes place by diffusion mechanism and there is a rapid phase which occurs between 1 to 7 days and stationary phase between 4 to 6 weeks. Illusion of antibiotics from bond cement depends on the surface roughness, porosity and concentration of antibiotics. Next is Elizaro's external frame. It is based on the principle that growing bone changes its form and volume according to external stimuli, that is the Wool's law. This Elizaro external frame produces a continuous distraction force which can lengthen or correct the deformities of bone. So the mechanism is distraction osteohistogenesis which is defined as a biological process of newborn formation between surfaces of two segments of bone that are gradually separated by incremental traction. And the distraction is 1 mm per day in 4 interval of 0.25 mm. Phases of distraction osteogenesis are latency phase is the interval between osteotomy and lengthening is called the latency phase. It is usually 7 to 10 days. Next is the distraction phase where the correction and lengthening takes place. Last phase is the consolidation phase is the time from the end of distraction until the bony union. And the consolidation phase is usually two times the distraction phase. Next we will discuss about just or Joshi's external stabilization system. It is developed by Dr. B. B. Joshi in Mumbai, India. It is useful in trauma and also for deformity corrections in upper limb and lower limb, especially for resistant club food correction. 
Parts of Jess are it has got a connecting rod, distractors, link join and K wires for application of Jess into the bone. The mode of action is differential distraction as compared with Elizaro it is fractional distraction. So what is differential distraction? Here the concave side of the deformity will be distracted twice the rate of the convex side. So it will prevent the crushing of tissues on the convex side and lengthen the limb and effectively correct the deformity at the same time. That's all for today. Thank you.